Hi friends and welcome back to the second part of the book Thinking Fast and Slow. If you haven't seen the first part, you can click on the link in the description below and check it out. In this video, we'll broadly discuss three principles. Do we understand statistics? Does our happiness depend on a path? And the powerful process of anchoring. As promised in the last video, we also look into one question that the Nobel laureate himself does not have an answer to. So, what do you think? Do we understand statistics? Let's see. Mr. Jones has to be discharged from a hospital and there are two copies of his report containing his diagnosis. Report 1 says that Mr. Jones has a 10% probability of committing an act of violence. Report 2 states that of every 100 patients similar to Mr. Jones, 10 are estimated to commit an act of violence. In which of the two cases would you be willing to discharge Mr. Jones? See if your answer matches with the majority. This question was posed to two group of students and twice as many respondents denied the discharge of Mr. Jones in the second case. This is because a rare event when expressed in terms of relative frequency seems more likely to occur than when it is expressed as a statistical probability. There was another study done on a drug for children. The result of the study were phrased in two different ways and were then presented to two different groups. The first one said, one in every 100,000 children who take this drug will be permanently disfigured. The second said, this drug protects children from the disease but has a 0.001% chance of permanent disfigurement. In which case do you think parents agreed to administer the drug? In the first case, the image of the disfigured child is more influential and hence parents were less likely to administer the drug. This effect is called denominator neglect, where we ignore the plain statistics and favor the vivid mental images which tend to influence our decisions. Because when we say 1 in 100,000 children, it instantly paints the picture of that one child who is likely to suffer. So turns out, we do not understand probability as well as we think we do. Let's try another experiment. There is a taxi company that owns 100 cabs, 80 red and 20 yellow. You see 5 red cabs come out in a row. Which car do you expect to see next? You would expect the next cab to be yellow even though the probability of seeing a red cab is still near 80%. We ignore the most probable outcome because we focus on what we think would be most likely. We often do not evaluate all the possibilities before coming to conclusions. This bias manifests itself when we try to time the stock market. Just because the market goes up for a few days, we expect it to fall without evaluating the fundamentals. Our brain tends to ignore the statistics because to a large extent we do not understand it. So the next time someone tells you that you have a 1 in 10,000 chance of dying in a boat accident and hence you should take the boat insurance, you should probably sail away from there. Now let's look at happiness. Does our happiness depend on the path that leads us to our destination? Or is it absolute? You become the CEO of a large organization without any efforts versus you work really hard and give your all to eventually become the CEO of that large organization. Where do you think you will be more happy? I will leave that question for you to answer. According to the experiments, our happiness does depend on the path. Take two scenarios. In the first one, you are given $1,000 and if you wish to earn more, you must choose between receiving a definite $500 or taking a 50% chance to bet on $1,000, which you may win or you may lose. In the second case, you are given $2,000 to start with and you have to choose between a sure loss of $500 or taking a 50% chance where you may or may not lose $1,000. Both cases will give you two options. One is a definite choice and the other one is a gamble. In the first case, most people choose to take the sure bet while in the second case, most people take the gamble. This shows that we don't always make a rational choice. Let me explain this further. The starting amount you get in the first case is $1,000 while in the second case it is $2,000. And if you think about it, the overall amount you earn in the end is the same in both the cases if you take the sure bet. It's $1,500. But the experiment shows that receiving $1,500 in the first case will feel like a win and make us happy, but receiving the same amount will feel like a very distasteful loss in the second. So we fear losses more than we value gains. But how do we use this in our regular life? You have a friend who has a serious drinking problem and you want him to quit. You have tried everything. You tell him how he can have a better life, own a good car, a nice house, only if he quits the drinking and gets a job. But it doesn't work. He does not care about any of those things. All he cares about is how to get the next bottle of alcohol. 
What you can do instead is to tell him all that he will lose if he does not quit. His health, his family, his house, relationships. Fear is always a strong motivator. You have been a lovely audience and I have something for you. I will give you two incredibly tasty homemade cookies for just $20. But if you buy five of them, you can have them for just $30. And if you order the cookies right now, I will send you an additional cookie for free. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> no, there are no cookies on sale, but which one would you go for? Most of you will go for the $30 cookie even though you may only need two cookies. Does it not sound like a familiar marketing strategy? This process is called anchoring and it is one of the most powerful and well-established behavioral principles out there. Using this strategy, you can influence the decisions people make without actually forcing them to make any particular decision. Example Organ Donation There are countries in Europe that have an organ donation checkbox printed on the driver's license of every citizen, which by default is unchecked. The citizens are then asked to opt into organ donation if they like. In some other countries, this organ donation field is checked by default and the citizens are asked to opt out if they wish to. The proportion of donation is 90% in one case and a mere 18% in the other. Can you guess which is which? The effect of default value is clearly enormous. It is 90% where the organ donation field is checked by default. So as you can see, Noble Laureate Daniel Kahneman brings to us so many important principles that we can use in our daily life. But wait, what is the question that he himself has not been able to solve yet? It is about our well-being. What is your mood in real time? Are you interested? Vital? Do you feel energetic? Versus how satisfied are you with life when you think about it? These are the two most important questions we all need to ask ourselves. Which of these do you think has a greater effect on our health? You can mention your thoughts in the comments below. There are a lot of valuable insights in this book and I would definitely recommend it to all of you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more of such awesome content. And until then, keep your brain hungry for more.